Hey, how's it going? So, film, it's kind of like dead, right? I think you're only your grandparents and your parents have ever shot on film, so is it dead? I was going on a trip down to Melbourne and I was going to bring my digital cameras anyway, but I thought, wouldn't it be fun to experiment on film? Now, I sort of spent a little bit of time taking a couple of test shots and I picked up this Canon film camera, entirely completely manual, and expected like nothing because you need to spend quite a lot of money to get some decent looking photos. Like you need to spend more than the cost of a brand new mobile phone to get a digital camera better than the mobile phone. And this was about $400 all up. And some of the photos coming out of it were really quite surprising. So I shot on these two film stocks, Kodak Ultramax and Fujifilm Superior Extra 400. What a silly name. They're both 400 speed film. That means they're sort of all-rounders. You can get film speed that's much more sensitive, but comes with more grain. So I tried to just stick with the 400 speed because then it's pretty even comparison. On our trip out to Melbourne, here were some of the shots that I got. And notice there's something about these photos that, that just sort of feels different. Like they were taken just a short couple of weeks ago, but they immediately feel much older than they really are. All of these bar the Big Banana were taken on the Fuji film and the Big Banana was taken on the Kodak. So we've got some photos of the F1 event that I actually attended. And as you can see, once again, they were taken in 2022, but it looks like they were taken in 1992. Oh, we have some of the photos I took of my friends while we were traveling in Melbourne. Um, I think if I had a choice next time, I probably would have shot that on Kodak. There's something about the Fuji film that sort of gives them like a green tinge, like they're really sick. I understand that they're not supposed to look amazing, but it just kind of irked me. Like you can see this one of my friend Phoenix. Um, it sort of gives him a greenish tint. Whereas this one was shot on Kodak and the, the skin tones just look better. And you know, if you're the resident photographer in your friend group, you know that you're always falling behind. So here's a couple of the shots that I got while I was falling behind and my friends were asking me to hurry up. Um, I also noticed that on our trip home, there was quite a lot of sunlight during the day and none while we were in Sydney looking at the Opera House, but the Kodak roll seemed to handle the lighting changes quite well. Um, it didn't seem to struggle with the low light and then during the full day, it still managed to capture the color of the sky. So despite spending $400 on this camera, I really think it was worth it based on the photos that I got back. A couple of issues though that I had with this camera was there's a bit of a vignette around the edges of the frame. Now it's not a big deal, but it kind of looked a little bit weird, but you know, it's a film photo. It's not supposed to look super tactile and sharp. I also went into it kind of thinking that the Fuji film wouldn't be that good, but despite picking up on that slight issue with the green skin tones, I think it's perfectly serviceable as a film stock. If I'm ever running out of film, I can always turn to the Fuji film. And that is why I like film, because it provides that instant nostalgia when you take these photos. And thank you for coming to my TED talk.